Arta, welcome back from that uh, awesome break. It's still Daybreak Nigeria on Television Nigerian. My name is Anthony Momodu. Stay here with my co-uncle, Cynthia Agbo. We are poised, still very poised, still having fun making your breakfast truly awesome. And we must sincerely apologize for that stretch in the break. All right, uh, now we're back into business. It's time for us to look at all the big stories making the rounds right here in Nigeria, looking at our national dailies we've got the punch newspaper the daily trust nigerian tribune the nation's newspaper and definitely we've got the sporting life and leadership newspaper for review not forgetting the blueprint newspaper these are the papers that we'll be looking at to give you all the big stories making the rounds but we kick start with the punch newspaper the big stories here which then says nigerians have lost confidence in the military monarch tells army panel and I've got a federal government probes alleged contract inflation asset diversion in 28 MDAs. That's awesome. Big stories on page 23. Go there and find. I've got politicians preoccupied with elections for security economy. Bother me, says Mr. President. Find details on page 2 of the Punch newspaper. I've got a union kicks as Kenyan Airways sacks 22 Nigerian workers. Find details on page 24. And I've got PDP. Felana flee federal government as, poly, as police shoot at shite protesters, arrest 15 shites injured, 22 policemen, says the PPRO, talking about the public relations uh, officer of uh, the Nigerian police. And the picture story you see on your screen there shows uh, the protesters, shite protesters, stoning at the Nigerian uh, police and uh, also vice versa. We've got uh, soldiers invade Delta committees around sack homes for or tips. Find story only on page nine of the Punch newspaper. We've got sex for Mark Prof. Uh, we may involve police, says the OAU vice chancellor. Find details on page four of the Punch newspaper. And then we've got secondaries got 250 million naira from Dasuki for special duties, says the EFCC. And page three is where you find that big story. And a headsman slay four policemen, 32 villagers. So just kill four headers. Uh, details of this very interesting story you find on page 9 of uh, the Punch newspaper. But uh, my big question to you is uh, politicians preoccupied with elections, but security, economy is my business, says Mr. President. We see playing holier than down. Well, like I said, it's yeah. a white lie. I, I don't even know what color to call this, but she, I don't want to call it a lie. But I feel that he was not he was i don't want to think he was scheduled to make this statement i don't want to feel like he was trying to impress okay. someone okay he was amazed by Teresa may's look i don't think Perhaps. Teresa May's as she's, cute. A, she's a stunning woman no no so. she's not as she's, she's not half as cute as my first lady Aisha no 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 we no, cannot no. compare no we can't compare but of course you but know the accent got him mixed up perhaps yeah. <laughs> but because i feel that the same person who says that he's not concerned with politics of 2019 but concerned about leadership uh, governance uh, security and all of that the same person declared last week his intention to run for 2019 now if you if you have told us this like like if you had not declared already right. and you were working so hard and you make the statement yeah who you would know, say, who say yeah. oh yes our president is truly is truly for us but but right now we don't know it. anyway he said it uh, yeah. before in the beginning i belong to everybody <laughs> i belong to nobody so all right let's go uh, we've got a uh, pdp and falano uh you know giving knocks to federal government as police shoot at shite protests uh, how do you think that protest went yesterday? Do you think it's just lost its value or it shouldn't have gone violent? It, it shouldn't have gone violent, not until when the, uh, 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 the Nigerian police got involved. And of course, you know, when the Nigerian police get involved in something, it doesn't always come out so fantastic. Now, this, these guys have been at the Unity Fountain, uh, not just one day for days, protesting, you know, 
peacefully, peacefully, peacefully about the, uh, uh, the, the continuous detention of, of the Elder leader. Zake, yeah. of their leader. And so you coming up and then trying to chase them away. Of course you don't. The, the hum, I always say this, every human being has every atom of violence in them. It all depends on at what point you decide to exact that violence. And right. so when you feed them to the world, they have no choice because it was it was terrible. Now, a friend of mine, his sister's car got destroyed at that place. You bullets were flying up and down. People were, but we thank God that we didn't really have so much case of, of people of death. To God be the glory. But um, I, I feel that there are better ways to, 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 to handle issues like this apart from coming to throw tear gas and using violence. We don't have to always use violence in this in the country and the Nigerian police have to understand that not everything can be achieved through violence. All right, I uh, hope the, the Inspector General of Police uh, has uh, heard that out. Uh, we've got the uh, government proves alleged contract inflation, asset uh, diversion in 28 MDAs. Uh, that's too huge. 28 MDAs is as good as the whole MDAs. Uh, what does that tell us in terms of fighting corruption and the corruption still prevalent? We all know that when it comes to corruption in Nigeria, corruption has eaten deep into the fabric of our nation. And so it's just at this point, because we have allowed it to grow so much, at this point, it just seems like you're not doing anything. But, but we can we must stop trying. All right, uh, okay, let, let's go to the other issue about headsmen slaying 50 these men and 32 soldiers. Uh, how worrisome is it that we're not just having civilians killed by these headsmen? Having we're having security agencies being, being killed. killed with with no, uh, you know, looking at what they represent to the Nigerian people. I expect that by now, given the, the uh, uh, you know, reoccurring cases of killings of the headsmen, police, and all of okay. that, I expected that by now the police, the, the, the security agents would have been able to beef up security, would be able to beef up uh, their the personnel, you know, b because you can't just sit down and you don't just, you can't just let them take you off guard because you can't or you didn't know they were around that environment. This, these are times in Nigeria where everywhere is hot. Like, not, not literally, this one is so hot, but you cannot just be too careful. You have to be because it's, it's you can't afford to allow any hole in any point That's at any it. point. Now, so for, for this is not the first time, I've and it, it just seems like every day you take the papers, you always see headsmen killing in one place or the other, and security agents are also involved. It is very pathetic because if the police who is supposed to secure us, if the, the uh, security personnel who are supposed to be guiding us are also being killed, then what would the other just me and you get to do? We just feel that okay, fine, we are just living our own lives but we, we just pray that the the, the 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 police will be able to have a meeting within themselves and see how they can beef up security see how they can you know beef up their their personnel and let things go up fine all right so mr president uh, has uh, told Theresa may and the world that he's more concerned with security and the economy of the country we are yet, waiting to uh, see. he was one week away from the country before the meetings that was supposed to hold in in the uk accord so Let's see how that plays out. But the last story I'd like to get your views on is sex for Mark, uh, Prof. Uh, the, the school says they were now involved in Nigerian police in the matter. For what? The question is, has the Nigerian police not been involved before, before now? now? So are you just, are you just involved in the Nigerian police? I, I and feel is it going to make it better or worse? It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense involved in the Nigerian police because Wait. the same police have been there before. What have they done? Now, is this... My question is, is to them is, is this a case of Nigerian police or is it a case of, of it, it, this is this is a uh, there, there's what they call um, uh, what's the name now it has to do with character and your person okay do you understand the, the integrity the, yes, of, code of, of conduct of, it, of the professor, of the professor. And, and the integrity of the school at stake so uh, would you think if they have done their investigations and the prof has been found wanting he should be just given a boost or suspended or Giving a fine rather than going there. The other main way. thing is the first thing that brought this man to limelight, <laughs> that made him yeah. public and made him a celebrity <laughs> right now, is the fact that sex for Mark, that is the main thing. Not that he stole money, not mm -hmm. that he did anything. Now, that particular thing needs to be attended to. Let us not use anything to cover up. Let us not use either police or anything to cover up. That was the main thing, and that should be dealt with. And we have definitely we have the code of conduct, we have the character, people in charge there in the institution. We have even if you don't have an institution, you can get people to compromise that 
I have because this is because if you don't address this matter right now that it's still hot, another person will do it. If I don't be surprised, if we are talking about it, someone else is also doing it. All right, uh, let's go to your next big paper for review. We have the Daily Trust this morning and the big story here. I'm, I'm bothered about security, economy, not 2019. That is uh, Buhari. And um, kidnappers abduct German engineer kill cop in Kano that is on page 16 of the Daily Trust. Uh, how Nema XDG, seven directors, looted billions that is coming from the presidency. You find that story on page 12. And uh, 115 arrested as police and uh, IMN members clash in Abuja. That is on page 3. Health workers still begin indefinite strike today. Wow. That is on page 7. How I paid ex-minister to others 450 million naira. That is coming from a witness. It is on page 6. Electricity firms assess 158 billion naira facility to repay loan. That is on page 17. And there's a sports story here. Neymar can leave Brazil at World Cup. That is uh, Pele. Pele, right? Yeah, Pele. <laughs> and then uh, Batuayi could miss World Cup. That is the key. Batuayi. Ex-Chelsea striker. Okay, so no, no, no need of us going to the security be bothered. Let's, okay. let's talk about the Neymar. This case has been up for... Let me say like story. one week plus now. Yes, the the, the Nema, the DG, X D G and also the directors looked at billions as come from the presidency. We think that this Nema's uh, case had been up and last week they had a hearing which a whole lot of, a lot of things were spilled out and <laughs> so many you know, first of all, I started with the, the, the 1.6 billion that was given for relief, and right. it wasn't given, it was released last year, June, June thereabout, and it wasn't uh, uh, given to, it wasn't sent to the areas, not until December, okay. uh, which, is, which is very, very bad. So now, what do you think, what, what is the fate of this? Would you think that the Nigerian government is going to handle this matter very well? Because now, about telling us that they looted, they did this, they did that. What? I think uh, we'll be putting our trust uh, on the judiciary and the government uh, agencies, the stakeholders, uh, to be sure that once the investigations, already investigations have been done, they've found this people guilty. Now, we're going to see how serious the government is in fighting corruption and also giving a very stern warning for people not to go that route anymore. And so at the end of the day, let's see what happens, how stringent the punishment is would uh, tell us how sincere the government is in fighting corruption. But don't be surprised, uh, we might just start seeing a slap of on the wrist instead of a very huge hammer <laughs> okay. coming down. So help workers to begin indefinite strike today. I think it's, uh, it's been surprising that in 2018 we've not had them go on strike here. So it's <laughs> part of the deal every new year. <laughs> If it's not the doctors going on strike, it's the whole health sector going on strike. But it just tells us that the call for emergency in the health and education sector is real and we have to follow the suit. But this time around, we're going to see if the government, uh, probably they are looking at the fact that it's a pre election year. Mm. If we go on strike, at the government might be, you know, want to uh, respond quickly in order not to soil their chances come 2019. It's okay, Rio. All right, uh, so let's go to the next uh, big paper here. We've got the nation's newspaper and the big stories uh, beginning from page 8. It says APC tenor extension court fixes uh, May 14 for judgment. And uh, we've got uh, headstone Q32 in Nassau villages. Page 6 is where you find a big story. Uh, six policemen killed in Benway and Kano. And uh, we've got Musa promises to bang in more goals for the Super Eagles as the guest said for the World Cup. Find details on page 47. And I've got EFCC 1.28 billion spent on cars for secondus and others. Uh, its campaign of uh, economies uh, calls uh, the PDP, claims the PDP uh, chairman. And I've got 2019, not my priority now, says Bohari. All right, uh, let's look at uh, APC tenor extension. Now we've got a date, May 14th. Do you think uh, May 14th comes? We're likely to see another pushing extension also of the court date, just like we have the tenor elongation already. <laughs> you, I, I really do not understand why the tenor elongation has to get to this point where we we'll have to have go, a go court case. This is a very simple thing. Don't, don't go the second time or don't go the fourth time, don't go the fifth time. 
let someone else come in. You say no, you want to cut. Could this be a good distraction and a, a good way to divide the APC so that other political parties could stay clear? I, I, just, I just feel that they, I, I, from what I'm seeing in the whole APC thing, I, I feel that they are all evil. Yes. Because you've done your part, let's do his part. But the party agreed to extend his tenure. He didn't issue it laterally, he just decided to do it. This same party also are divided amongst themselves. Okay. Some are saying go no, this direction. No, do this direction. So how can a, a party where some are saying don't go, some are saying go, some are some are even indecisive of where they belong. How can they all agree? So, but if they feel that court is a, is a, is the best is the last resort for them to handle the situation, we are we are we are not dying tomorrow to God be the glory, and they will, we will wait till 14th of May. Uh, for to hear what the judgment is going to be and i just hope that it is not extended or is not elongated all right uh, looking at efcc saying 1.28 billion uh, was spent on the other question could be uh i think just this cut is trying to nail the EP at uh, all means and how far do you think this is going to go yes they know 1.28 million but he has not been arrested all this while and do you think they're playing games with us the, 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 the truth is they have always known the amount for every money that is being spent, for every money that goes to an unknown location, for something that doesn't concern we Nigerians, they know about it. I would say that the, I, I, the, FCC, the FCC, I mean, knows about it. But this is a very strategic time. This is the right time. This is the time when they have looters list. This is the time where you're looking for points to bring down the PDP. This, see, right now, everybody is trying to, you know, what can I do to, to truncate this person's plan? What can I do to destabilize this group? What can I do to make this people feel okay? We are ahead of them. So it, to, to me, it's, it's points between themselves, but not points for we Nigerians. All right, uh, sad story here, the picture story as regards the clash yesterday with Shite Group with the Nigerian police, one fear dead, 22 officers injured in police and we got shite members clash. Uh, for you, looking at one dead, if that's true, do you think that might inspire more protest in the future? Thank God it's just one. We're, we're grateful for that, that it's just one. But um, for people, for, for, for a group that is so loyal as this, we pray and hope that it doesn't inspire doesn't, more doesn't protest. Inspire more protest. All right. All right, so leadership this morning, even though you gave me all the papers, you know I don't really like it, but I forgive you. Uh, pandemonium, a shy take on police in Abuja, such a big word, pandemonium. Yeah, that's, that's why he has a big paper. <laughs> all right, that is on page five of the leadership newspaper this morning. And the writer here says 22 policemen injured, 115 sec members arrested. A PDP condemns couple called for probe. And then security economy on my mind, not 2019. This is coming from uh, President Muhammad Buhari. APC senators divided over convention committee lists. And uh, behind we have uh, CBN capitalizes AG SMEs. Uh, something you might definitely want to read about. Hmm. Okay. All right, so let's go to the sporting arena. We've got the sporting life here. Very interesting stories here for you to read. I've got Ronaldo shows off leg muscles. Uh, you find that story on page three of the Sporting Life. We've got Salah says, I'd rather trade goals for the UEFA Champions League title. And uh, now we've got knee surgery set to rule Vidal out. Manchester United to offer Pogba for sale, uh, for bail, sorry. Uh, that's talking about switching a uh, bail of uh, Real Madrid for Pogba. I, I don't think uh, that's uh, good news to some Manchester United fans who love uh, Paul Pogba a lot. And uh, we've got uh, Joel B reveals I was fit for the 2014 World Cup. And uh, we've got uh, Russia 2018 World Cup, uh, Eagles 23 man scored out June 4th. Uh, so initial 30 man list uh, to be made public May 15th and Ross spotted in Lagos Monday night. And uh, we've got Victor Moses shortlisted for Chelsea Player of the Year. And uh, we've got a handshake controversy then a Royal Defence, uh, Musa, and uh, Chelsea FA Cup semi-finals. We've got Alonso 
doubtful. And Bayern Munich wants Anthony Marcia of uh, Manchester United. Those are the big stories uh, making the rounds. And not forgetting our captain, fantastic. Talking about Mikel Obi says, uh, Mikel tells Nigerians, don't panic. Find details on page five of the supporting life. Okay, uh, Mikel says, don't panic. Uh, the spirit is going to be set for the World Cup. Do you believe? Do you trust? Do you have confidence in Mikel Obi and the spirit team for the World Cup? Um, I'm already scared for, I'm already in panic, let me use his words. I'm, right. al I'm already in panic because over the news, we, we are definitely had uh, the 2.5 uh, billion. billion that was meant at least to be given to, to them, them for yeah. a start. Has not even been given yet and there are still some excuses. So now when people don't have the necessary logistics, they don't have, it, it drains you psychologically. And then when you, 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 you we don't want a story whereby where, while they are there, they are still thinking of putting things up. It, it, it has a way of draining you. So, uh, someone like me, I'm already in panic. Well, <laughs> yeah, we've, so we've got uh, 60 days to the World Cup, and so we're hoping that before it turns 30 days to the World Cup, we the hope money so. would definitely uh, land it in their accounts. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go to the next paper. All right, which is the last paper here, Blueprint. And um, I'm not bothered about 2019 election. That is a Buhari to make. The writer says, security, economy, my priorities. We will assist on abducted schoolgirls. That is uh, the prime uh, minister saying that. Four years after, Chibo girls' parents seek UN intervention. And a gunman abducts German kill police sergeant in Kano. That is on page 13. African militaries must develop unified approach against insecurity. This is on page 5 of the blueprint. Police nap 115 shy protesters in Abuja. And also, Niger police recovers three AK-47 rifles from Bulani man. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Health workers begin nationwide strike tomorrow. And uh, on page 17, something you would definitely want to uh, read that is uh, for ladies that like their skin a lot. <laughs> Exposure to sun causes 80% wrinkles age sports. You hear that? Yeah. Good. Take it. <laughs> All right, so those are the big stories uh, making the rounds on Nigeria's daily. Now you know the big stories. Now you can make well informed decisions as you step out today. We'll be going for a quick break. When we come back from this break, we'll be talking with our in house analyst as regards uh, politicizing the release of the Dapchi and uh, Chibo girls uh, the way forward for the federal government of Nigeria and its uh, citizenry after this break. Welcome to Living Treasures Academy. Enjoy a conducive and serene learning environment. Qualified and experienced teachers. Equipped computer laboratory and library. Secured atmosphere. Extracurricular activities all embracing curriculum for total development of the child comprehensive education for leadership join us today from crash to secondary levels leaving treasures academy committed to excellence Nigerians have tested political parties, religion and age. It is time to get a bridge builder to heal the wounds. Hassan Dan Kwambo. 
under your watch as executive governor of Gombe State, you have been able to manage the state's resources in view of the numerous projects so far completed and the low statutory federal allocations accruable to the state. With your landmark achievements in healthcare, youth employment, women empowerment, road infrastructure, pipe-borne water, security, education and agricultural development, we are sure the better Nigeria. 2019 is not about power or change, but rather it is about Dan Kwambo to replicate his humility and servant leadership. Dan Kwambo, Nigeria. Nigeria, Dan Kwambo. For almost a decade, the Nigerian army have given their all to ensure that our dear country is not overrun by Boko Haram insurgents. So having the process paid the ultimate price, while many will forever live with indelible scars occasioned by their determination to protect the country, no matter the hurdle. Despite these, they have remained resolute and undaunted, and today, all territory the insurgents one took control of have been recaptured and normalcy restored. And now for the first time in a long time, the end of Boko Haram is foreseeable. Therefore, the wisest thing for the remaining insurgents to do is to surrender today or face total destruction from the army. Remember, the Nigerian army will stop at nothing to ensure that total peace is restored in all parts of the country. So, be wise and embrace peace today or get ready to be ruthlessly dealt with. This message is brought to you by the Coalition on Conflict Resolution and Human Rights in Nigeria. Welcome to Living Treasures Academy. Enjoy a conducive and serene learning environment. Qualified and experienced teachers. A quick computer laboratory and library. Secured atmosphere. Extracurricular activities. All embracing curriculum for total development of the child. Comprehensive education for leadership. Join us today from crash to secondary levels. Leading Treasures Academy. Committed to excellence. Nigerians have tested political parties, religion and age. It is time to get a bridge builder to heal the wounds. Hassan Dan Kwambo. Under your watch as executive governor of Gombe State, you have been able to manage the state's resources in view of the numerous projects so far completed and the low statutory federal allocations accruable to the state. With your landmark achievements in healthcare, youth employment, women empowerment, road infrastructure, pipe-borne water, security, education and agricultural development, we are sure the better Nigeria. 2019 is not about power or change, but rather it is about Dan Kwambo to replicate his humility and servant leadership. Dan Kwambo, Nigeria. Nigeria, Dan Kwambo. For almost a decade, the Nigerian army have given their all to ensure that our dear country is not overrun by Boko Haram insurgents. So having the process paid the ultimate price, while many will forever live with indelible scars occasioned by their determination to protect the country, no matter the hurdle. Despite these, they have remained resolute and undaunted, and today, all territories the insurgents one took control of have been recaptured and normalcy restored. 
And now, for the first time in a long time, the end of Boko Haram is foreseeable. Therefore, the wisest thing for the remaining insurgents to do is to surrender today or face total destruction from the army. Remember, the Nigerian army will stop at nothing to ensure that total peace is restored in all parts of the country. So, be wise and embrace peace today or get ready to be ruthlessly dealt with. This message is brought to you by the Coalition on Conflict Resolution and Human Rights in Nigeria. Welcome back from that uh, break. It's time for us to join something very interesting and very selling uh, discourse of national issue, talking about politicizing uh, the release of that tea and Chibro girls. Uh, right here, we've got in the live studios our in house analyst, uh, Intem. Uh, nice to have you join us once more. Always awesome having you. Uh, looking at this topic, uh, it, it sounds controversial. How important is it for us not to politicize the release of the Dapti and uh, Chibo girls already? Because uh, we have issues as regards to the last remaining girl, talking about Le uh, Leah Sharibu, uh, who, because she's a Christian, has been held back. Yeah, it's, it's important not to politicize it, but politicizing it also is a direct function of the scenarios that play out. You know, like people, commentators, critics, analysts have. Uh, Try to analyze situations, the circumstances surrounding the abduction and their return. And you can only try to play politics with you know, the conclusions of some of those you know, analysts. Yeah, but one of the things that stood out about that episode was the fact that they were weeks away, right? Unprepared. Okay. Imagine like a terror group coming to breaking into your house. Move. You wouldn't have time to start packing luggages to yeah. move because you are tense, you are afraid, you are scared, you can even pin your palms, you know. And then the same abductors who took you away return you clean, well dressed, with some luggages. You cannot help but think twice. Right? So every right thinking individual who has an analytical mind, who has a critical mind, who has a thinking mind, who does, who, whose mind is not a tabular as I mean. Because you can't just copy and paste. That's the mind of a child. Okay. As soon as you start reading, any information that goes, gets to you, you process it. The brain is like a processor. Okay, this is what happened. Fine. Given. From this, what happened? Why did this happen? You begin to look at that. So those circumstances are the reasons why people are politicizing it. And you cannot blame anybody who's you know, trying to politicize because of those scenarios. That's why. But it's important for us that whether we politicize it or not, if it's a matter of national security, we should give it the required attention. And that's why we are saying, OK, let's assume it happened. Let's allow federal government to do what it's needed to be done in order to play that, you know, that, that case. All right. Uh, the federal government, I don't know if they, they're doing the whole issue more harm or good. Uh, recently, we had a CD, uh, that's a Dika, uh, one of the journalists uh, overseas, who said it was only 15 of the girls that are still alive. And the federal government was swift to come out to say no. Uh, that's what the cheap bug girls. Yes, as regards the cheap bug girls. Yes. And his uh, federal government comes out to say he's not involved in our negotiation, so he does not have an idea of how many girls are alive. They cannot vouch for that claim. But at the same uh, time, we have the federal government coming out to say because of the, the differences between the Boko Haram set, it has been difficult for them to conclude the negotiation for the release of the last uh, Dapche girl. Looking at both scenarios, can we truly have faith in the federal government that they will succeed in releasing the remaining uh, girls? Well, the faith is a 
is gradually and is gradually waning, it's fading, you okay. know. By the day. But like for cheap burgers, it's like the fourth year. Uh, fourth year anniversary. It's, yeah. So for for that, politics came into it because of the timing. You know, the Buhari administration, APC came under the tripod of insecurity, corruption and the economy. And one of the reasons or why Jonathan actually failed in that as well because they saw, they, saw, they saw him as not being, you know, brutal enough okay. you know, to take some necessary decisions yeah. and all of that. So when that episode came out, the timing, because it was close to the election year, and you can only make matters worse for your, op for your opponent in order to make him become weak. So people saw that as one of those political you know, stunts played by probably the opposition in order to discredit people of Jonathan. That is why when information got to him that girls have been kidnapped, it took him days to swallow that pill and come to terms with the fact that there was actually an abduction. Okay. That was why he was slow to act because he saw a political undertone. Okay. Now, it's, it's important to know that at that point, decisions are critical to the success of any operation. If he had swung into action immediately, whether it was a political, you know, action or not, probably would have gotten results almost immediately. Okay. But he didn't act because his gut feeling told him something else. It took weeks before that. And then coming to Chip uh, the Dapchi girls. Another reason people politicize is girls now. This is the flip side of Chibok. Okay. The Chibok girls were to discredit an incumbent and then have your way as an opposition. But here, we are seeing an opposition, I mean, the, 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 main, party the winning party, the government, okay. trying to play this other card, where, assuming the other person failed, you now play the same scenario okay. and you have succeeded okay. immediately. So that's all about politics. Okay. But four years down the line, a, a journalist coming to say 15, only 15 girls are left. What is your source of information? People may question that. What's the veracity of your source, even if there is a source? But somewhere last, uh, some years back, in 2016, mm -hmm. the same government uh, had arrested the same journalist or called him in for interrogation as regards his source of information. And the fact that he was playing the negotiation in between for between the federal government and the Boko Haram set. How come so the leader saying we cannot take his words for real? Yeah, that's because probably this time around, the, the, the words he is bringing will not favor the government of the day. Okay. It can cause a smear. Now remember that government would always want to do something that will favor it. All right. And, and it, it is incumbent on presidents, you know, and men to make sure that whatever is coming out is favorable okay. for the image and the brand that he has sponsoring. You know, that's why they can say that and come and begin to doubt the veracity of that. And of course, people want to, just a journalist, what if someone has paid him? What is the opposition has paid him okay. to come and do that in order to discredit the government of the day? So it becomes questionable. But right now, even the army sources, even the military sources, even our security and intelligence sources, what is the veracity of their claims? Because you remember the, 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 the shot uh, Shaka twice, shot him in the shoulder and said he was injured, he was dead. And, all and that he was, kept coming he back. Kept com he, back he, he, he died. He has fled and all of that, but every now and then he keeps coming out, turning out videos that I'm alive and all of those kind of things. So everything is shrouded in politics, but that's because we have over time had uh, campaign managers, we have had information managers that have not been credible enough to tell us the truth because we get to find out later on that most of the things they say are half truths, color truths, and all those kind of stuff that you cannot just rely on whole and wholeheartedly. That's why. Okay, so you've talked about Chibok and also with the Dabji. One thing I would like to know is that between the Chibok and the Dabji, one, why is it taking long for us to get the release of the Chibok? Be it 15, be it 100, be it whatever number it is. Why is it taking so long for them? Because if the same government can be released almost immediately, the Dachi. Why can't they also work out the release of the Chipok? Or is it because it is not it wasn't it wasn't done during my government? So let it slide. Yeah, but uh, the, 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 the circumstances surrounding the two of them are similar actually. But negotiations are different. The governments who handle both of them are different. And, and if you're looking at it at a ploy, 
to discredit somebody, a government, you will hang on to it for as long as possible. But because he promised to tackle insecurity. Of course he did. He did, but maybe those people who are doctors, you remember that stories came that they have been married to some of the terrorists. So, chances are that they are raising children for them. Would you release your mother who has few kids for you? Maybe they have a child now. Four years down the line, maybe they are two kids. Take away nine months. So, a child might be like three years plus. Might be two years. Some may not have taken immediately one year later. So, they may have been lost babies for them. So, you don't release those kind of people immediately. Some of them are in the babies. They, they are no more clustered in the same location. Sure. When yeah. the army started bombarding, aerial bombardment and all of that, they were, you know, trying to get into the Sami Forest to release them. They were split into different units, you know, yeah. units and handed yeah. over to different people. So now it's difficult. I know that when you're dealing with the group, so people can become, you know, a splinter group and try to like take decisions on their own. Because if you give me ten to keep, what if I can get to federal government and say I have ten. ten give yeah. me one billion. How are we so sure that the places they were bombarding were actually where those people were? Because it's possible that once they got the girls, they went to somewhere else and the Sambisa that was that was the, the whole army people were there could just be a hoax. Yeah, it's possible because if you hear that, because now remember these terrorists have informants in not just in government. Uh, Jonathan did mention the fact that the terrorists have you know infiltrated, infiltrated his, government. his government that he had. You know, they, they, they have people in his government. You know, but white people also blame him for that. If you know them, why don't you push them away? All right. So know that these terrorists have informants in the country. So they know that the target for the Nigerian army, the Nigerian military, is Sambisa Forest. So chances are that they were shifted out, to, of, out of the Sambisa Forest and kept somewhere. After all, you're, you're, you're holding them as bait. That's how terrorists fund their activities. Kidnap, get some funds, and then you release them. So if they had not gotten money, or if they knew that keeping the girls there would have posed a security threat to them, they shift them because they are going to use them to either get their members released or get more funds. So probably because they heard or they knew that federal government was targeting Sambisa Forest, then they just get to move. So no matter how much you bombard Sambisa Forest, you, you won't find them. All right, so already the whole issue has been politicized the way it is. Uh, my question is, uh, you talked about four years on uh, the, the ladies, the girls would have turned to ladies, uh, nursing mothers or so. Uh, if that's the case, should the parents be uh, this reality, so to say, and it's okay, there's a very strong chance we're likely not to see these girls anymore. Could you start making the narrative obvious to the parents so that probably it's more realistic than just believe what the federal government is saying, maybe for the cameras and for politics? Definitely. It's, it's about that time we started telling them the sad truth and making them face the sad reality. It's a difficult decision. It's a difficult thing to swallow the fact that you will not find your loved one anymore. Yeah. You know, so, but in this circumstance, some of the girls have been radicalized. Okay. In fact, they may not even want to go back to the outside world to go and face the reality of life because they may have been, you know, brainwashed to thinking that whatever government is doing, whatever their friends are saying, it's not the truth. They have to become radicals. And if that's the case, no, none of them is going to come back. So, okay. let, let us just face reality. Let government come up clean. See, the truth of the matter is, those people might even be on the street of Maiduguri, the street of Bon, the street of Chibok. They have come back, probably acting as informants for them. You wouldn't know, because four years down the line, some of them may have changed. They may not be in the exact location they used to be, so that you don't want to meet your parents. Yeah. They disperse them. You go this way, you go this way, and all of that. So, those who may have infiltrated us again, and you know, acting as informants for students, but the truth of the matter is what's your question? Federal government will be realistic. If you tell us that these people may not return, we won't take anything from you. It will only add to, you know, it will only add more feathers to your cap of honesty and being realistic. And the truth is, if for instance, if you visit on your wife and you go ahead and, I mean, I'm sorry, this is what happened, probably I don't know what happened, but this is the truth of the matter. Before she gets to find it, it's better managed than when you allow her to find out and then you begin to try to do some kind of defense. All right. So it's, it's a similar case. Tell us the truth. Gentlemen, from security reports, okay. this is the situation at hand. Worst case scenario, these people may not come back. And then you can even play the card of saying, if they had, if you're after you've been blaming the former government, if they had acted immediately, 
It wouldn't have been this difficult. Okay, take up, talk about the Dapti girls now. We acted immediately. All of them have come up, but near whom the terrorists are keeping based on religious, you know, background. So it, it, it's it's better being handled like that. But the, the, the truth of the matter is, nothing can compensate, can pay back for a child, you know, for your life. So call those parents together. Get a psychologist. Get a motivational speaker. Get spiritual or uh, religious leaders. leaders. Put those people together. If you're a Muslim, by the time an Imam talks to you, if you're a Christian, by the time a pastor talks to you, a psychologist talks to you, and those narratives put together, they may not work 100% immediately, yeah, but yeah. chances are that over time, Gradually. you know, wounds will heal. And people, we can also say, okay, let's do a burial for them, or let's do a remembrance for them, let's lay a wreath for them. Let's come up with flowers. Let's just come, come together and do a solemn assembly where we can just gather and say we apologize for inability to do this. But in the interim, what do you need us to do to help you get out of this grief? You begin to show some kind of the human side of you. And, and it, it will help. All right. Uh, how bad is the situation if the federal government had paid ransom for the Dapchi girls that were released and some of the Chiba girls that were released? If that was the case. Can we truly say we're fighting this terrorist, terrorist if we've given them some large chunk of money which <coughs> they're likely to reinvest in coming after Nigerians? Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult decision when you're in leadership. Like the US government, the US, America does not negotiate with terrorists. Terrorist. Yeah. That is the United States of America. Do we have that same stand? We, we try to think we have that kind of stand. But those people have advanced over the years. Their technology is top-notch, okay. security is top-notch, so they can use intelligence gathering to ensure that, okay, these people are here, and they launch operations like the line 11 you know, stuff, when Obama, you know, got to, got to kill Osama oh, Bin Laden. Osama Bin Laden. Those are top-notch security operations. Nigeria hasn't got to that level yet, so if we try to do like that, it would be difficult for us. Okay, so that means... Now, okay. going back, if we cannot... We have to pay the ransom. We have to, but I don't want to tell you that. Okay. Now, because if you say you paid for instance, 10 billion to Boko Haram, you, have, you are sure that arms and ammunition will come again. But that's how terrorist organizations survive. You can help people. Now, what did Lai Mohammed tell us when they, they brought it up to you? They used back channel negotiation. What is back channel? It ended like that. Who asked the meaning of back channel? Did he go beyond the literal meaning of back channel to tell us that back channel implies that we got a negotiator among the Shia group, among the Boko Haram, among Muslim clerics. We didn't know about that. All we heard is back channel. Okay, could back channel also mean swap of Boko Haram insurgents that have been pre arrested? It's you and I'm to give it meaning now. <laughs> right? But they did not say that to us. Okay. That's why people don't want to believe that. Okay. You see, the thing is, Whatever you did, parents are happy that our children are about Tell them the truth. The truth of the matter is we pay 10 billion to get it out. Is 10 billion more, more important than one life? Definitely no, no. It's not. Let alone 100 and something lives. Okay? But the truth is we have paid them this money. We know from the years that they are going to use it to get arms. So we're trying to block our borders. Okay. We're trying to secure the country. So the 10 billion naira we finish in feeding themselves, getting fuel for their cars and all of that. So, Played in such a manner that even if you give them 100 billion, it, it is inconsequential because you have your security architecture put in place to, to counter them. Okay. You understand? But government doesn't think, or the managers, the handlers of government information do not think to that extent to say, okay, this is the best way in order to handle this. So I, I think that we need more enlightenment for people who are handling those kind of information on how to disseminate it to the public. Put yourself in the shoes of someone who's listening to you. And then Play it in such a manner that it is believable that no just come and say back channel and it ends in back channel. You not leave us, give us the assignment of thinking <laughs> what is back channel. Probably, yeah. The Nigerian people were overwhelmed. Okay, yes, we've gotten the girl, so no one really hates attention to the back, the back channel. channel. You know, it, it, it's, it's very true. Ah, if, if you tell a parent that your child that was kidnapped is back, it's back. she doesn't care, care. what happened on the ground. But the thing is, how my daughter, thank God you are back. And that's all. All right, let's wrap the conversation up with uh, the last story, uh, the last most important content here. Talking about Lee, uh, Lee Sherebo, what should be the response of the federal government? Should they do all necessary to bring uh, Leah back, knowing that she's a Christian? And 
it might hurt the Christian community if she's allowed to go just like that. It might. It might. Now the thing is, at every point, where we have got to talk about the president. The president, I mean, have got to talk about the Dachi and Chibo. He, he always made reference to the fact that the last girl held from the Dachi saga would be released. The last girl would be released. Why is it taking forever? I think it's supposed to be an ace to make him score more points at the tip of election. It's coming. very possible that that's going to be like an icing on the kick of the Tibok saga. I mean, the Dabchi saga. At the end of the day, right close to campaigns or close to elections, and then that was one fantastic story. Breaking news. Breaking news. <laughs> Television, Nigeria, Nigeria <laughs> newscaster comes up, breaking news. The last Dabchi girl has been released. Wow. And then his rating, close to election, Paul Sora. Yeah, you know. And then it could also be played along religious lines. Okay. Now, Boko Haram means formal education or Western education. It's bad. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. Now, those girls are trying to get formal education. And when they, they say when you educate the girl child, you educate the nation. the nation. So for them, if they are fighting for Islamic religion to take over without Western education to them, educating girls is a problem. But letting 100 plots and then holding one back. Why? Okay, now in the course of spreading Western education in the North, what's the place of Christians? What's the place of the opposite religion to you? So chances are that, okay, if we get this one, we can silence them, but it can also, you know, become on the other side of the coin that if you do that, Christians will double their efforts and all of that. But I think it's a matter of waiting for the right time to release that girl because if they can release 100, why, why is that one a different case? And then who even told them that that one was not Muslim? At the end of the day, did they try to convert them? After all, 100 and how many that were released are all Muslim girls, we understand. And I'm sure all of them dressed with a hijab or something. Yeah. So what would have brought out that girl yeah. as being Same. Christian? You understand? What singled her out? Did she say in the name of Jesus? Did she say anything? Did they try to convert them? That's the narrative we're hearing. But at the end of the day, it doesn't hold enough water. So probably it's just a top of the ice that is waiting somewhere to be placed on the cake at the end of the day. All right. Uh, uh, I think uh, that's how we'll be calling a wrap on the discuss. I want to say a big thank you to the our in-house analyst for doing a human's job, tearing it down, talking about politicizing the release of Dabchi and the Chibor girls. And uh, I like one line I've taken away from his conversation, the back uh, of China, right? Uh, we'll right. get to see, probably talk to Lai Mohammed to see if he can break it down what back door China means, uh, what happens when the door is back in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so that's how we call it a wrap on the uh, African Spiders Break Fast Show, uh, talking about the big Nigerian will be at the top of the hour, talking about 9 a.m. We'll be heading to the news uh, so you can get all the big stories making the rounds right here in Nigeria. My name is Raymond Anthony Momodi saying thank you for always being part of this great show. And uh, kudos to the entire production team, everyone who made this production awesome, from Donald to Mr. Noel to Josh, Philip, and everyone else. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. And uh, Cynthia has the last words. All right, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Television Nigeria. Like us on Facebook, Television Nigeria, on Twitter, and of course, Instagram, Television Nigeria. My name is Cynthia Agua. Don't forget that today is a fantastic Tuesday. Life is very sweet, don't waste it. And of course, if you must climb the ladder of success, remove your hands from your pocket. Nice one. <laughs>
second coming and his The headlines. Nigeria Air Force wins new pilots. African Land Summit forces kicks off in Abuja. Presidency wants Buhari's second coming. And in sports, Vincent Nyama back on his feet. I am Ten Ekbang with the AM News on Television Nigerian. Nigerian Air Force, along with their counterparts from the Liberian Armed Forces, have winged 12 new Nigerian and two Liberian pilots in Abuja. The winging ceremony, which took place at the Nigerian Air Force headquarters in Abuja, had in attendance the Ambassador of Liberia to Nigeria, the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Defense, and the Chief of Air Staff, among other key personalities. TVN correspondent Austin Peacemaker and I has more on the report. The Nigeria Air Force, in projection of its air power against insecurities such as terrorism and militancy within and outside Nigeria, has continued to embark on UMA capital development to reposition the Nigeria Air Force to adequately deal with these challenges. Against this backdrop, 12 new Nigerian and two Liberian pilots have been winged in Abuja. The chief of air staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, while making his opening remarks, stated that the accomplishment of the Nigerian Air Force pilot and personnel who are undertakings in the face of testimonies to the quality of training they received. The winging ceremony we are about to witness today is a clear testimony of our commitment as a service that is responsive to the needs of our country and our people. The service has continued to discharge its mandate as provided in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria professionally and diligently. We are presently engaged with other security agencies in the northeast of our country to deal with the Boko Haram terrorist threat to our national security. Representative of the Minister of Defense, Mrs. Nuriatu Batagarawa, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Defense, applauded the Nigerian government for its continuous contribution to the Nigerian defense sector. I will not fail to express our profound gratitude to Mr. President who has continued to impose confidence in the nation's defense sector and in spite of the country's mere resources has continued to support and give special attention to the operational requirements of our armed forces. I wish to assure Mr. President of our honorable loyalty and total commitment to his aspiration for a peaceful and prosperous Nigeria. Also applauding the Nigerian government through the Nigerian Air Force, the Minister of National Defense, Liberia, expressed his delight for the two Liberian pilots. There has been a long-standing relationship between Liberia and Nigeria, and I am a daily witness to that. During the heart of our civil war from the 1990s, and this is why most of the graduates who came here when they were reading their profile and said they were born in the 90s, it just gave me the high memories of the Nazi. When all the other groups in Liberia, we have no one but we have like the uh, Nigerians that were the first to put the boots on the ground. As stated by the Chief of Training and Operations during the Wingy Ceremony, there are still four Nigerian Air Force student pilots undergoing training with the United States Air Force, and one of them is the first female potential fighter pilot in the Nigerian Air Force. It is hope this continuous capacity building for Air Force personnel will continue to yield positive results in projecting air power against terrorism and other criminal activities in the country. Austin Peacemaker in Aide, TVN News. As the 2018 African Land Forces Summit kicks off in the nation's capital Abuja, 60 countries' army officers have converged to brainstorm sustainable ways to tackle insecurity in the African region and the world at large. TVN correspondent again, Austin and Nida reports. In 
a bid to find sustainable solutions to African security challenges and to promote global alliance against terrorism. 60 countries army officers have converged in Nigeria for the 2018 African Land Forces Summit. The summit with the team Unity in Strength Combating African Security Challenges is organized by the U.S. Army African Command in partnership with the Nigerian Army to forge a common approach to combating transnational crimes and also promote peace and security in the African region. The sixth African Land Forces Summit being opened today is aimed at achieving a grand strategy for Africa and her allies. As you release the ambience of Nigeria, and look forward to exciting deliberations of the 6th African Land Forces Summit. It is gratifying to recall that the 5th African Land Forces Summit 2017, held at Lilonge in Malawi, provided an avenue for the United States Army Africa and other partners to collaborate and address African security problems. We face complex, ever-evolving threats across the continent, from the rise of terrorist networks to the growing problems created by changes in the world's climate. Recognizing that no single country can address these challenges alone, alliances and partnerships have emerged. From the six Amazon countries fighting alongside Somali units to defeat al-Shabaab, to the combined efforts of Senegal, Nigeria, Ghana, Mali, and Togo to ensure a peaceful handover of power in the Gambia last year. It is our hope that through events such as this summit, we can form communications today that will allow for continued sh such shared efforts in the future. The many regional partnerships we have across the continent are critically important to the security in Africa, which contrib contributes to the security throughout the world. The U.S. Army is proud to join in security partnerships exercise with many of the nations. The U.S. Army in the United States is committed to working alongside our African allies and partners to strengthen our collective response to the challenges that we face today. While opening the ceremony, the Chief of Defense Staff, General Gabriel Oloni Shaki, stated that the Nigerian Army stands in a good position to share his experience with other African armies in the fight against terrorism and other violent extremism. I am confident that the choice of the Nigerian Army to co-host this August event is anchored on the commitment the force has displayed over time in ensuring global security and recently the successes recorded against Boko Haram insurgency. I have no doubt that there are many lessons to be learned from the commendable effort of the armed forces of Nigeria in the fight against terrorism. The Nigerian army stands in a good position to share its experiences and ideas which are relevant in the contemporary fight against violent extremists. The summit, which will last for four days, is said to provide solutions and capabilities in ensuring African forces are operational and also promote intelligence sharing. It is also expected that the summit will provide various fora and sessions to interact with the hope to strengthen existing relations while also making new ones for peace and security in Africa and the globe. Austin Peacemaker in Ida. The lawmaker representing Anambra Central Senatorial District, Senator Victor Ome, says Nigerians should not rely on former President Olusegun Obasanjo on the choice of whom to vote in 2019. Addressing journalists in Abuja, Senator Ome said Obasanjo lacks moral right to dictate who contests or wins election, saying under his watch as president between 1999 and 2003, electoral banditry and electoral corruption were the order of the day. Uh, those of us who, who served uh, this country in, polit in political party leadership when Abbasanjo was president, I was very critical of Abbasanjo's presidency. I was. Because uh, there were too many things he did 
I, as a person, did not agree with. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't see him as somebody who wants to enthrone democracy in Nigeria. Rather, he sabotaged democracy. So, under his watch, Nigeria didn't make any progress in having a decent democracy in terms of allowing people to vote for people of their choice, mm -hmm. and then uh, those votes are respected. Uh, electoral banditry was uh, of the highest proportion under Obasanjo's presidency. He accused Obasanjo of not utilizing the opportunity available then to put the country on the path of democratic growth. The senator maintained that through the third term agenda, many things went wrong within the country's political sphere. Senator May also noted that the sales of legislative quarters at giveaway prices is currently putting pressure on the businesses of lawmaking in Nigeria. Still to come, presidency warns of President Buhari's second coming. And in sports, Vincent Iyama back on his feet. In another foreign scene, Russia denies interfering with Syrian chemical weapons evidence. For almost a decade, the Nigerian army have given their all to ensure that our dear country is not overrun by Boko Haram insurgents. Some have in the process paid the ultimate price, while many will forever live with indelible scars occasioned by their determination to protect the country, no matter the hurdle. Despite these, they have remained resolute and undaunted, and today, all territories the insurgents want to control of have been recaptured and normalcy restored. And now, for the first time in a long time, the end of Boko Haram is foreseeable. Therefore, the wisest thing for the remaining insurgents to do is to surrender today or face total destruction from the army. Remember, the Nigerian army will stop at nothing to ensure that total peace is restored in all parts of the country. So, be wise and embrace peace today or get ready to be ruthlessly dealt with. This message is brought to you by the Coalition on Conflict Resolution and Human Rights in Nigeria. Thanks for staying tuned. Chairman of the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption, Itse Sege, says that President Muhammad Buhari's second term will be similar to his administration in 1984. Sege pointed this out recently while answering questions from journalists. He said that Nigerians will witness a firmer and stronger leadership type as they did in 1984. In sports, former Super Eagles captain Vincent Enyama has applauded the Leal B reserve squad for their tremendous support in welcoming him and getting him back to full fitness. Enyama took to his Twitter handle to show appreciation for the squad, stating that the memories he had with the team will linger on forever. Enyema is in the final year of his contract at Lille and could be on his way out of the club this summer. Nigerians have tested political parties, religion and age. It is time to get a bridge builder to heal wounds. Hassan Dan Kwambo. Under your watch as executive governor of Gombe State, you have been able to manage the state's resources in view of the numerous projects so far completed and the most statutory federal allocations accruable to the state. With your landmark achievements in healthcare, youth employment, women empowerment, road infrastructure, pipeline water, security, education, and agricultural development, we are sure the better Nigeria. 2019 is not about power or change, but rather. It is about Dan Quambo to replicate his humility and servant leadership. Dan Quambo, Nigeria. Nigeria, Dan Quambo. On the foreign scene, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says Russia has no hands in interference with evidence at the site of the suspected Syrian chemical attack which led to Western airstrikes on Saturday. Concern about tampering was raised by the U.S. envoy to the International Chemical Weapons Watchdog whose inspectors are trying to reach the site in Duma near Damascus. 
the nine strong team from the watchdogs organization for the prohibition of chemical weapons was told by Syrian and Russian officials in Damascus that there were still security issues to be worked out. Duma, which was a rebel stronghold at the time of the attack on 7th April, is now under the control of the Syrian government and the Russian military. And that's AM News on Television Nigeria. Just before we go, let's remind you of the stories that made headlines. Nigeria Air Force wings new pilots. African Land Summit forces kicks off in Abuja. Presidency wants of Buhari's second coming. And in sports, Vincent Yama back on his feet. Remember, love is a dangerous thing that can easily tense heart if not properly managed. I am Nten Ekwang. Thanks a great deal for watching.